Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah Life Everybody, it's Paul Nisa with Torah Life Ministries, and today we're in the Torah portion for this coming week. It's Exodus 10.1 to 13.16, and there's a lot going on this week, so let's get right into it, because this week we see uh, the third uh, Torah portion in a row which is Moses going to Pharaoh saying, let my people go. But this week we actually see Pharaoh letting his people go. And uh, we see many interesting things this week that I want to discuss. Uh, there's several different topics I want to discuss. The first thing I want to discuss is that uh, he had to go to Pharaoh over and over again. And it was Yahweh that had to harden Pharaoh's heart uh, to finally show his magnificent and mighty work. You see... Uh, the Pharaoh's magicians were able to mimic uh, many of the miracles that Yahweh did through Moses, but it was only Yahweh that was able to overturn them. Pharaoh's magicians weren't able to overturn them. But Pharaoh didn't realize this, and Pharaoh had a hard heart, and he didn't want to let go of his power. But finally, after the plague of killing the firstborn, he said, that's it, I had enough, go, take everything you want, take every last animal to sacrifice, take your children, your spouses, just get out of here, get out of here immediately. And then Moses left. But we see here, uh, in this week's reading, we see here, Moses really had one thing to say to Pharaoh, let my people go. And it was actually Yahweh speaking through Moses and Aaron, because it wasn't Moses' people, it was Yahweh's people. So Moses came and said, you know, this is what my Elohim says, let my people go. So, you know, Pharaoh was talking to Moses, that's the problem. You know, Moses was talking as a third person in Yahweh. So, you know, Pharaoh needed to get on the level and start talking to Yahweh, then he would have understood the issue. But Pharaoh, you know, he couldn't care if it was Moses, and even if it was Yahweh, he said a couple of weeks ago, I don't even know who Yahweh is, so what's the big deal, why should I listen to him. Well, he wasn't listening to Moses or uh, Yahweh, and Yahweh had to harden his heart for him to listen. And you know, many times he has to do that to a lot of us. He has to harden our hearts, and we really have to, you know, continuously see the plagues over and over again in our lives before we finally wake up and say, okay, now I'm going to listen. And some people just never do, but you know, I pray that everyone else that does, because I understand it's not easy to live a life with these plagues, but, you know, it's certainly easy and joyful to live a life uh, with Yahweh. So, we really got to listen to that. But finally, Pharaoh listens and he goes, but even then he changes his mind, and he still chases after uh, the children that left, uh, the children of Israel. But, uh, we, we there's so much to see this week, but, you know, it, it was just amazing... I, the darkness that, that fell over before the plague of the death of the firstborn, just the darkness, it was so dark for three days, and but around the children of Israel there was light. And it's amazing. Now, yes, there was physical light where they could see, but there was another light, the light of Yeshua, uh, the light of Messiah, that Yahweh's light was shining on those children, even back then in the darkness that Egypt was in. Uh, so that that's very interesting. So we see all these different things here in this week's Torah Portia. Uh, you know, but then we see the, the, the children of Israel, they, they're told they can go, and they go. They go immediately, because Yahweh says, tell them they can go immediately, and they go immediately. Now, when they went, here was the interesting thing. There were two roads they could have taken to the so-called promised land that Yahweh had waiting for them. One was a direct route from Egypt, which was the quickest way. But to do that, the children would have had to went through the land of the Philistines, which were uh, enemies of the, of the Hebrews at that time. So Moses decided to take the longer way, because he knew it might not have been the most efficient way to get there in terms of the length traveled, but he did know uh, it would have been the most efficient way to get there in terms of the least hassle. And that was one of the reasons why it took them so long to get there. Now the other reason is... The, the children of uh, Israel, even though they left Egypt, Egypt didn't leave many of them, and it was still in their heart, the ways of Egypt. And Yahweh ha had them wandering around the desert for 40 years because of their stiff-necked their stiff -necked hearts, and, and, and they were stiff-necked as well, and, and he, their hearts were hardened as well. So they wandered around, because it shouldn't have taken that long to get there, 
uh, even if you take an indirect route, it doesn't take 40 years to get from Egypt uh, to Israel. Uh, but it took them that long, and they didn't even all make it. None of them, only two of them made it. Uh, and that's the problem we had. You know, I see the same issue when I teach people about diet and health. You know, I tell people, you know, the ideal ways to eat for them, but they want to look at somebody else and say, well, this person's eating that way. For example, myself, a lot of people ask me, well, how do you eat? And, you know, I tell people the way I eat is not the way I got into eating healthy because there's a progression that takes place. You know, we need to have patience, and that's something we lack today is understanding that there's, there's, a, there's a detoxification period, there's a transitioning period, and there's a timeline for a reason. And that's what we learn, and also our body has time to adjust. Well, that's what we could look at this time in, in, in the desert. It should have been a time for them to learn and adjust. But it wasn't. It was a time for them, Yahweh, in His mercy, giving them chance over and over and over again to be right with His word. And over and over and again, uh, they showed their lack of faith. The bigger miracles that they saw Yahweh complete, the more lack of faith they had. It shouldn't have been that way. It should have been the opposite. I mean, the more miraculous you see things, the more you should obey. Uh, but you know what? It's not just then. The same thing's happening today. You know, we have Yahweh's mercy in Yeshua. Uh, over and over again, he wants us to see our errorous ways and, and repent and start obeying his commands and his Torah. But continuously, the more it's shown and the more it's seen and the more knowledge that comes out about the scriptures and, and the more information with computers and everything else that comes out and the more archaeological finds that they're finding in, in Israel to find the actual places, you know, inch by inch, measuring up exactly to the way it is in the scriptures. You know, people should say, hey, I can't dispute that. I mean, there's the proof there right hand in hand. But what do people do today? They start giving more excuses of why they don't have to follow. So, so that's another problem we have. Well, you know, I'm, I'm reading this great book here called Torah Scope uh, by a fellow I met in Texas recently. And he, he goes through all of his names, William Mark Yui. And he goes through all of the, the Torah portions, and I was just reading it last week, uh, and it's amazing because he was talking about how uh, when he first became a believer, you know, he believed everything that he thought the Bible said, but he believed what the, the, the churches were saying. But then when he was reading this week's Torah portion, just as a new believer, uh, he got stuck uh, because uh, it says here in the scriptures, it says here, uh, you are to celebrate uh, the Passover as a permanent ordinance. So, you know, that was this week's Torah portion where it says uh, it's permanent. It's always and forever. So, he goes on to say and show here, it says, uh, the scriptures say forever or eternal. So, this man started questioning, well, what does forever and eternal mean? Well, he asked his pastors of his churches and everything else, and they said, well, that was for the Jewish people. We don't have to do that. Or we no longer have to do that because of blood of Messiah and, and you know, and Messiah's sacrifice. We no longer have to, to, to keep the Passover. Well, this week's Torah portion talks about the Passover. And it says, forever, throughout all your generations, you know, you are to keep these feast days and, and specifically the, the Passover. And so this man, uh, William Huey, Huey was uh, questioning the church and everyone else, and he could have been like most Christians out there today and said, okay, I'm satisfied with the answer I got. It makes sense to my mind because I'm a new believer. But no, he kept praying, and, uh, and he kept reading and studying, and, and every time the word came, forever or eternal, you know, it struck something in his heart, like, what does that word mean? Why would Yahweh say forever and eternal? If he didn't mean forever and eternal. And so this fellow here, who was just the average Christian going to the average Christian church, got invited to a, a Passover Seder, which is what we're supposed to do during the time of Passover, or kind of mimicking uh, an example of how we're supposed to uh, observe Passover. And when he went, he was there and it hit him. It just it hit him that, that this is what they're supposed to be doing. And it helped him really open his mind and open his heart. Uh, it says here, you know, one of the really things that touched him was 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, which says, All scripture is inspired by Yahweh and profitable for teaching. 
Now, the amazing thing he said here, and it's a great point, and that's why I wanted to bring this up. It says, all scripture is inspired by Yahweh and profitable for teaching. Well, the point that he brought up here, which is excellent, was when this was written, when Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, there was no New Testament. He was talking about the Torah. He was explaining to Timothy that the Torah, you know, all of it, you know, is inspired by Yahweh and it's profitable for teaching. So when it says in the Torah forever, and you are to keep this, uh, this feast day forever, throughout all your generations, uh, eternally, there's a reason for that. And, you know, I'm not saying it's necessarily a salvation issue because we're saved through blood of Messiah, but if we're truly saved, we should have a desire to do His commands. And it does come down to an issue of blessings, without a doubt. The closer we keep His guidelines and instructions, the more blessed we are. And the more we ignore it, when we should know it and understand it, curses come into our life. Now, it says in the scriptures that uh, Yahweh knows things that uh, we don't know yet, and we're not held accountable for them. But he says we are held accountable, us and our children, for all that he has revealed to us. And he has certainly revealed to us his feast days, his appointed times, uh, and, and his Torah. And, and these are the things that are profitable for teaching. So these are the things that we must keep, not because we have to, but because we want to receive the blessings that come along with knowing Yeshua as our Messiah. And we have to be thankful for the mercy that comes along with Yeshua in saying, hey, you know, you might have gotten it wrong over and over again, but I've given you this much time to get it right. Because I'm telling you this, everybody, you know, Yahweh's judgment will come and it will come swift. So we have to be ready. And we are held accountable for all that He has revealed to us. You know, some things are hidden from us that he doesn't want us to see, but it can be as clear as daylight uh, what he does want us to see, and it's right there in the scriptures. But just like this fellow had this issue when he went to ask his pastors about, uh, you know, these feast days and what does forever mean, and they told him, well, that's not for us and that's not for today. There's a lot of church leaders out there saying these things, and that's just because uh, they've been misled or deceived. And the enemy is real smart, and he's going to try to get to us any way he can. And this is the one, one of the ways he's getting to us. So everybody, you know, just look at the Torah, look at the guidelines and instructions, and look at the words of Yeshua Messiah. Yeshua taught from the Torah. There was no New Testament around when he was here. Paul taught from the Torah. There was no New Testament around when he was here. So this is what's profitable for our teaching, and this is what we learn from. There are wonderful testimonies in the, in, the, in the New Covenant for us to learn how to model our lives. But every single person in the New Covenant but believed in Yeshua Messiah, believed in the Torah, and kept the commands of our Creator Yahweh. And it wasn't until the Catholic Church came in and, and they decided to try to separate Christianity from, from Judaism. But you have to understand... Christianity is a sect of Judaism. You can't separate it. You can't replace the church with Israel. If you do that, you don't have a scriptures. You don't have the Bible. You know, Yeshua was Jewish, and, and he was explaining to the people, you know, how to accept the covenant of Yahweh. And you don't have to be Jewish to do that, but you have to be obedient to do that. And, and, and that's what we have to understand. Obedient to what? Obedient to church and the man of church, or obedient to our Creator's instructions and guidelines that Yeshua, known as the Living Torah, commanded us to follow. So this is what we all have to do. Everybody, I encourage you to read the Torah each week, and that's this week's Torah, uh, which is uh, Exodus 10.1 to 13.16. Continuously read the Torah, learn and grow, and pray about it, and see for yourself uh, that Yeshua's mercy is there, and we're all in the light of Yeshua. And uh, praise Yahweh while the darkness of Egypt is around us. And it's not about Egypt. It's about the disobedient, the disobedience of, our, uh, of the world today. Uh, it's about uh, being obedient to the Word. And that is the light of Messiah. All right, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. If you have any comments or questions, post them below the videos. And tell everybody that we're doing the Torah portions here. And uh, next week we'll be back with next week's Torah portion. And uh, for this coming Shabbat, uh, Shabbat Shalom, everybody, and uh, we'll see you again soon on Tour Life Ministries. Shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways.